Okay, in this video, I would like to explain or I would like to show you a recommended or a most commonly deployed real world network topology for Citrix NetScaler. In previous video, I have shown you my lab topology, which is basically just for this course where I have just two networks. My NetScaler have two arms, one connected to external network which is simulated by this IP range. In real world, it's a private IP range, but in the lab, we are assuming that it's public IP. And so one arm is connected to the external network and the gateway and the gateway to outside world is this router, right? Which has also has the IP of the same range. So they are like your external network where your firewall and your IP have your router IP same range or same subnet, and then on in one arm or one interface connected to internal network where my resources or services are, right? And this is also the management IP for managing that scalar, and of course subnet IP or SNP will also be based on this uh, will be on this network. This topology use as uh, here you can see in this topology one of the problem not a problem I would say limitation is the only way for my external computers to go out like the traffic from uh, from my internal network to outside is via Netscape. Because that scalar is the one that's connecting this part of the network and this part of the network, right? So, even though if my compute, my servers here using this switch as a default gateway, the default route of this switch has to go to that scalar, and then that scalar will pass it, pass this traffic out, right? In real world, you may not see this deployment. You may see it. Um, there are some scenarios in the small shops or some medium size, small to medium size deployment. And again, it depends on the network flexibility, what is required, what's not required. But this is not very, very common practice. Again, it's a lab topology, so that doesn't matter here. But in real world, you may have maybe more enforced security policies, more enhanced security requirements. For example, as you can see, in my scenario, I don't have a dedicated firewall here. Although I mentioned in one of my previous video that uh, I have an integrated firewall here, and that's the case in, in some scenarios, some really high quality enterprise telecom class routers uh, you know um, they have very high throughput as well as they have an integrated firewall um, some specific modules as well that you can add and they can process it to very high throughput so it could be just one device like a UTM sort of a thing um, with the routing function just to, to name a few vendors, Juniper has some, Cisco has some uh, models, um, their routers has integrated firewalls, or the least you could do, if this is the scenario in a small business, you can enable access control list on this router. For example, let's say your plan is to publish HTTP and HTTPS using this net scalar uh, by creating virtual IPs for HTTP and HTTPS, you can create an access control list here and allow on HTTP and HTTPS traffic to pass to net scalar. However, as I said, that this may work in lab environment or a small to medium sized environment depends what is required and what's available, what's not. In real world environment where resources are there, you may see something like this. 
or this is what something I would like to do at a mi as a minimum in real world environment. Here, the main difference is my net scaler in DMZ. I have three networks here. Internal, represented by 10, 10, 10. DMZ network, which is 172.16.21. And external network, which is 192.168.1.4. My net scaler here is deployed in one ARM configuration. It means it has just one interface, and that's connected to DMZ network. Another major difference that you will see here, my web servers are not hosted on internal network. My web services or servers are hosted on DMZ network. Right. And I have a firewall here between an external network and a DMZ network. And another firewall between a DMZ network and internal network. And on internal network, I have multiple VLANs. For example, 101010 10, 10 is my server VLAN. I have a server here in this, sorry, in this VLAN. You can see. An example, I have just one server, but it could be some other servers as well, like database server or some app server or exchange, mailbox server, etc. Okay, uh, and here I have another network or subnetwork, 10, 10, 11, that's for the clients. You may have multiple subnetworks for client 10, 10, 11, 10, 10, 12, 10, 10, 30, for example, one for finance, one for IT, one for marketing, bottom, one for voice data, of course. Uh, bottom line is I have multiple subnetworks on internal network, correct? All of these networks gateway is this core switch. Core switch default route goes to firewall. This firewall default route goes to this firewall and this firewall default route goes down. So NetScaler is not involved in outbound flow. Outbound traffic flow. It's not a default gateway for my internal network. I don't have to do that. Okay. As far as these servers are concerned, I'm publishing these servers through NetScaler and they are in DMZ network, so NetScaler can reach them easily because the SNP will be defined on the DMZ. NetScaler already have in this scenario this SNP, so as you can see the subnet IPs in this range so it can communicate. At most, I would like to do maybe one another VLAN and the DMZ switch connect the management interface of NetScaler to a separate VLAN. But even that's a possibility that more flex, one of the flexibility that I can do. But anyway, I can have a management VLAN also here in this. Uh, management IP, I mean, can also define to DMZ network or another VLAN on the DMZ network. So this is ideally would be the case. Of course, as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, firewall has to be high speed, high throughput, so it don't bog down the net scale. This is one of the typical scenario or network topology that you will see in real world environment. Net scale one arm configuration deployed in DMZ network. This is not the only configuration once again. There are many possibilities. Possibilities are endless, I would say. NetScaler could be an internal network, could be an external network, could be a DMZ network, one arm, two arms, lots of possibilities. Depends what you want, what you want to achieve, how flexible your network is, what type of security policies are there, uh, and what you are allowed to change, or what you, what type of change you can you are allowed to make your network to accommodate that scalar solution. Of course, diff the other thing, endless scenarios. Sometimes the firewall can also work as a layer two, right? 
So it could be a transparent firewall. So um, this is the idea to show this slide to you, just to those people, especially who are new to this, that don't think that lab scenario is ultimate. Lab scenarios are typically created to show you the functionalities. Not necessarily they will reflect the real world scenarios. The real world scenarios are a little different, but configurations are exactly the same. So, and uh, as an example, I wanted to present this one of the solution that it's one of the most commonly deployed topology for Netscape. Okay, guys, thank you so much, and I'll see you in another video. Take it easy.